Today I'm going to be watching more Roy and HG. This is them interviewing Bob Hawke, who was the Australian Prime Minister between 1983 and 1991. So yeah, I'll be honest, I've not actually heard of Bob Hawke before. So tell me your memories of him as a Prime Minister, as a person. Uh, was he successful in that position? Uh, but yeah, let's watch Roy and HG interview him. Yes. Thanks for coming in, Bob. Now, last week we had Richard Carlton on the show. And no we blood, showed, mate. Yeah, no, that's right. And we showed the classic bit of footage and we established that a lot of people wanted to punch his head in. Can we mark you down as another one who wants to punch his head in? Oh, I've forgiven him. Have you? Yeah. How did you... He said that he didn't get on very well with you during the Prime Ministership. Is that right? You must have crossed paths. Well, I wasn't one. lonely. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, on Syria, is it more serious matters, Indonesia, how, how do you think it's shaping up up there? It's improving. <laughs> no, seriously, you had to go. Uh, you've got to... Uh, I, I don't know how serious we want to be, but uh, you've got to divide his uh, period up into two. He, uh, he did a lot for the country, did a lot for himself and for his family. <laughs> but um, just one statistic, to be fair to the bloke, uh, in about 30 years, from about 1960, the number of people living in absolute poverty went from uh, about 58% down to 17%. So there was a there was a sharing of it to some extent. He got the economy going, diversified it, but buggered it by uh, greed. Yes. And uh, there had to be a change. Are so, you hopeful of things in Indonesia, or do you think there's yeah, going to be a lot more tears? Yeah, because the Indonesians are people. decent people. Mm -hmm. uh, they are um, a friendly, lively, imaginative people, and I think they'll respond to good leadership and there's a lot of pressure now from within the country to get rid of the cronyism which just poured billions of dollars into too few pockets yes. and uh, not only the pressure from inside but there's pressure from outside, sensible pressure so I'm hopeful and uh, all Australians have a, a vested interest in it working because there's 200 million Indonesians sitting right next to us and uh, it's important that they do come good and do well. What? Diplomacy, Bob. I, I understand, uh, you know, golf is useful with diplomacy. You used to have the odd game with George Bush. And it seemed to me uh, it's, it's a terrific thing to do if, you know, you have much in common with the bloke you've got to, you know, spend a bit of time with. But with golf, you know, I mean, you tee off. So you're together there, you know, g'day, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. You tee off, then you've got to bloody find your balls. You never see each other <laughs> until you meet again on the, uh, you know, on the green, and then you blast off again. Is it useful, though? Is well, that, yeah. I just want to straighten you out on the, on the yeah. facts a bit. Yeah. I found playing with a, let him be unnamed. Mm. In fact, he's dead now. But uh, an Asian leader. And we hit off, and he hit his ball very badly. Yeah. Disappeared down into the trees on the left. But it was remarkable. I walked along and I saw these minions right down there. Soccer, he got the down there and there was a ball in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> so he, he never had any trouble with losing his ball. No, I looked after. They didn't do the same for me. But quite seriously. Did you bring it up with him? Did you say, yeah, the idea of the bloody game is. Yes. <laughs> I brought it up diplomatically, yeah. yeah. So how would you bring up something like that? Said, you do that again and I don't pay. <laughs> and did that work? Yeah. Do you, do you have to lose to certain leaders to clinch a deal, though? I mean, no, it's often not in your life. Not in your life. <laughs> I always Golf played to win, mate. Yes, no, I always played to win. And was this, did this ever cause, um, should I say, a tiff? Uh, no, 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 not a tiff, no. But quite seriously, it's, uh, it's a great aid to, uh, well, to diplomacy and getting... I remember there's a fella came down, he was a Prime Minister, again, of another Asian country, no names, no pactrel, and uh, wasn't terribly bright. Uh, that's why I well, know no, he's no, coming from no, I know him, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he isn't very and, bright, is he? He can stand you on right. Talk about this, talk about that, economics, politics, the region, the world. Wasn't getting too far. And, uh, and uh, then we went out in the golf course and he was a different bloke. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've got some good agreements out of it, too. Is it difficult when you, when you, <laughs> when you don't get on with the, uh, you know, when, when the talk is awkward? And is it difficult if uh, English isn't the language that uh, is of common parlance? Now, uh, dealing through an interpreter, always having someone there interpreting, is that, does that make it awkward? Yeah, well, it's obviously easier if they can talk English, uh, but we're, we're so damn lucky in this country because overwhelmingly you find that uh, the people you're dealing with uh, talk English. But there is an, a, a tremendous skill in interpreting. The best interpreter I ever met was uh, Gorbachev's interpreter. I mean, he was absolutely brilliant. I mean, he, not only that he could get the, the straight you know, language, but if, you know, you used idiom or yeah. cracked a joke, I mean, you could pick it up and it was registering straight away. Are you sure, or was the interpreter saying, he has just told a joke, please laugh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all, I can, all I can say is that it seemed to work. I was scheduled to have 20 minutes with Gorbachev and we finished up having three and a half hours together, so it seemed to be working all right. What are those meetings like there? You know, you obviously have an agenda and you, you see the cameras come in, you're sitting down there and then the cameras go out. Mm. Is all the work largely done by the helpers around you or do you actually, are you able to strike deals in those meetings which surprise the helpers? Yeah, well, I'll give you an example. When the first uh, official visit I did as Prime Minister of China, we had uh, all the bureaucrats and I don't knock bureaucrats, I think too many politicians do. We're, we're fortunate in Australia. And this may not be a popular thing to say, but I want to say it, defence of public servants, the ones I knew uh, in the Commonwealth, they were dedicated and capable people. But a lot of them uh, you know, weren't imaginative to the nth degree. And we got up there into Beijing and we sat down in the, the embassy and we went through the prepared brief. And I said to uh, the ambassador, look, uh, I want to raise with um, Judge Young, he was the premier then, uh, the possibility of uh, an integrating move of, between our two countries in terms of the iron and steel industry. We've, we've got iron ore, coal, they didn't have such high quality uh, constituents. And he said, oh, but Prime Minister, we can't uh, do that. This hasn't been talked about. We haven't talked to the officials. And I said, oh, no, bugger that. He said, oh, you can't do that. Well, I did it. And uh, within 12 months, we had them out here that bought into the iron ore mine in Chana. So, yeah, you can, uh, um, HG, you can. Yes. Uh, can yeah, sorry, I just want to stop. I won't stop again. I just want to say a couple of observations so far. Really enjoying this. First, I never knew who Bob Hawke was. He seems like a great guy, very charismatic, very engaging. Like, I really enjoy listening to him speak, uh, but also very personable as well. He just seems like a good guy. Seems like a real person, like, as opposed to a lot of politicians these days who you just can't be, you can't feel on their level. He seems like a, just a, a genuinely, genuinely decent guy. And Roy and HG, I've only seen really their comedy so far, and of course this has got little funny bits, but to see them interviewing a Prime Minister and doing it very well, asking very good, interesting questions, it's great to see. It's a brilliant interview. I won't stop it again. Let's watch you it. You to move your tie off your mic there. Yeah, sorry, Bob, this is Tech Talk here. There you oh, go. Thanks very much. Sorry. Yeah. Man, it's all been wasted. That was oh, you. Oh, I did hear that noise there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now, uh, uh, what I was, I was going to say as, as well, um, uh, with, uh, with the uh, Morgan Gallup poll released this week, looking at, say, issues du jour, say, the, uh, the election happening in Queensland <laughs> with the uh, Borbidge government, mm. and uh, there seemed to be the suggestion that the, the Hansonites might win a couple of seats. Now, having this sort of implies a sort of ignorance on behalf of the electorate does it not uh, because you know that sort of prejudice uh, can only flower or blossom in ignorance and now are you distressed by well it's not just ignorance uh, although there, there's some element of that but fear i, I think yes. fear, fear people around the world not just in australia do have a some less sense of security now perhaps than they did before and when people don't feel secure and a bit afraid, then they are susceptible to the, uh, the easy um, propaganda of uh, these false prophets. Mm. Let me say it. this though, and I, I travel a lot in Asia, and that's where our future is. You know, more than 60% of our exports go there. The future of everyone here and their kids depends upon good relations with Asia, because that's where we do our business. Mm. And I tell you what, if 
she wins a seat, it's a tragedy for Australia. Because they're watching what's happened here and, and the truth is that the overwhelming majority of Australians are good, decent, non-racist people who understand that we're a country of immigrants. We're made up of people who've come from 140 different countries. More than any other country, we have been magnanimous, opened up our country. Uh, we have benefited from them, they have from us. And it would, if there's one country in the world which shouldn't founder on the issue of race, it's Australia. We are the most multiracial country, but mm. if she gets up, wins a seat, then it's a dark day for Australia. The other burning issue, should we have two cricket captains? <laughs> well, that's from the ridiculous to the sublime, isn't it? Um, well, my answer to that is ideally not. The best thing would be to have a bloke who was worth his game in each form yeah. of cricket and have the same captain. Now, mm. if that's not so, and the judgment is made that uh, Mark Taylor, who is a great test captain, will rank as one of the great test captains, um, they feel he's not up to it as a player. Mm. So they still want for another year or so, at least another year, to keep his talents, the tests, where, and certainly in the last 12 months, he's worth his game as a, as a test player. He got out of that slump. So at the moment, that's the, you know, the best way to go, but ideally mm -hmm. should be one. Do you worry about the future of cricket? Because you would have seen enormous changes in your life now. Now, obviously, you go back to the Don knocking the golf ball up against the uh, corrugated iron yeah. uh, tank stand. Now we have, you know, institutes. Now we have training. We spot these players at a very young age. They come through these schools where they're able to study cricket itself and so on. Whereas, obviously, in your day, when it was a much more kind of felt thing and uh, a much more sort of... You know, um, natural. Natural, natural yeah. yes. Yeah. An ordinary thing that you practice at home. You know, you ripped a paling off the back fence and you <laughs> scored 100 before lunch and so on. And all that sort of stuff. You played out the test matches. But now it's become too sophisticated. And we're losing that sort of what I've always liked about Australian cricket that rather rough edge. There's no more, you don't feel as though I, I reckon, can I reckon see a the other, bone. Uh, other countries say we've got a lot of rough edges. Yes, no, I understand <laughs> that, but it's in a different area. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Institute of Sport. No. <laughs> um, Can we get kiddies playing in the backyards again? Yes, we do. I mean, kids cricket has been uh, fostered a lot. No, I, I think you're right and you're wrong. Let me uh, sense in which you're wrong. Mm. Is every aspect of our life, whether it's going to the dentist. Would you like to have dentists now while you used to go to dentists as a kid? Mm. No, because it's we've improved. Yes. We've improved in every way. Would you like to have the same sort of old bomb of a car that you had before? No, you, you improved. And we should take advantage of all the, the improvements that are available in sport, as in all other parts of life. That's a very but good point. I think you're right. I think we, they play far too much cricket now. Yes. And they're getting jaded. And, and, and where I think you're right, the, the, the joie de vivre, I mean, yes. I know, we've yeah, got a French speaker here. We've got a French speaker here, yeah. 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 Would you translate that for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What I'm talking about, Rob? Right? No, no, no. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like the that. accent that's got me worried. Enjoy a bloody living. Yeah. 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 Um, but seriously, I think that sort of thing that you were talking about before, the, you know, the, the get up and go, the, the, the real joy and toughness of our bloke, they're getting jaded. Yeah. They're getting jaded now. So, um... It's, you know, it's this problem, there's so many parts of life, the balance between the joy of the game and the commercialism, turning the coffers over. Are they so getting so. paid too much money? I mean, in our day, we did it because we loved it. Yeah. We didn't want money. Ah, oh, are you we doing this do... for free? <coughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty, <laughs> <laughs> but... But you work for That's a good point, again. <laughs> I really like this, yeah. this game. No, I take the really view good, that really good game. those blokes out there, and the same with women in their netball, the, the sportsmen and women, if they turn the turnstiles over and are putting the money through, I reckon they're entitled to a fair share of the game. Yes. And finally, what did you think of the State of Origin match last night at the City? I reckon Boston? it was one of the great games of football. All. I mean, I'm a yes. Australian rules you know, upbringing, but I, I got to learn about league when I was PM and followed the Raiders down there. I watched it last night. It had everything, I thought. Everything. Right. Marvellous. Great match. game. Yes, yes, one for the uh, chocolate box of memories. Absolutely. Boy, uh, Bob, rather, boy, there's an interesting wait. confusion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, hey, Dad. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, we could talk uh, all night, and probably uh, you more than most would appreciate the commitments problem here at the sure. Channel 9, and with the income being what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Nine is, uh, <laughs> can you bash a couple of cricket matches together as a way of thanking Bob Hawk? <laughs>
Yeah, man. That was a brilliant interview. Bob Hawk. I would vote for him today, man. Why do we not have politicians like that? Guys that can just give straight answers that most people think. No beating about the bush, just straight to the point. The questions they were asking, I was really impressed with. It was really interesting questions. That's the sort of things I want to hear from politicians. Their opinions on serious things, whether it's foreign policy or whether it's sports. Uh, but tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think about Bob Hawk. And yeah, recommend some other interviews like this from Roy next year. I'd love to see more like this, this format. Thanks.